Hi and welcome to Chris Ryan Golf. We are here in the Taylormay Performance Centre at the Belfry. And in this video we are talking about the top of the backswing position. We're talking about a cross line position and we're going to look at what effects that's going to have in your downswing and why you might want to address this position at the top. So what do we mean by cross the line? Well, if I turn this way, <clears throat> we are talking about a golf club which points at the top too much to the right of my target for a right-handed golfer. So you can see here how as I approach, if I work towards maybe a position which would be a little bit more desirable, we're talking about a club head which is too much to the right as you view it from the camera. Now, this is something we do see quite commonly. It's very, very common to see golfers achieve this position at the top. And for some golfers, what it will actually do is it will enable them to hit that ball on a right to left ball flight. So for some golfers, it's not a bad thing and they actually get a ball flight which is quite desirable and sometimes they, they believe that's kind of working quite well. It's not going to be the most consistent way for you to hit the golf ball and certainly not the most consistent way for you to hit that ball right to left. We're just going to talk a little bit in this video about what you're going to do in your downswing as a result of this sort of cross the line position at the top. Effectively, when we get that club pointing too much to the right or the club head too much to the right, effectively what we've done is we've got the golf club too steep in the golf swing. Okay? It doesn't appear to be too steep because it's at the top as opposed to halfway back. But if I do a demonstration here for you, if I go to a position which is, let's say, about right, if I steepen that club shaft and then move my hands up to the top, you can see how that's across the line. So having the club across the line is effectively the same as having the club too steep during the golf swing or certainly during the backswing. Golfers are generally going to be quite good at attempting to shallow the golf club. We generally feel more comfortable or we generally would get the idea that we're going to hit the ball better if the club is on a slightly flatter angle. The problem with a cross line position at the top is that the laying down of the club shaft or the flattening of the club shaft tends to happen a little bit too late into the golf swing and it can often happen in the wrong way. So if I get a position which is cross the line, so I'm going to go to the top here, that golfer is most probably as they start down, going to push the hands way too far out in front of them in an attempt to lay the club down. Okay, so do that again for you, cross the line, hands move out and that lays the club down. What we'll see here is we've got the hands moving too much away and the club laid down a little bit too late into that downswing. The other way that golfers tend to change the angle of the club shaft is by early extension. Early extension is a movement of the hips or the pelvis in towards the golf ball. That can have an effect on the handle, which in turn can have an effect on the angle of the club shaft. So what we mean is we go up to the top, cross the line, hips work too much in towards the golf ball, and you can see how that will also lay the club shaft down. If you lay that club shaft down and you get that club approaching the golf ball from behind your hands, you can potentially create a right to left ball flight, so a draw ball flight. It isn't, however, like I said, the most consistent way of producing that ball flight. If we lay the club down too late into the golf swing, so the hands move out, the club lays down here, we'll often get this position here where the club is maybe slightly open. To square it, I can, but at the rate of closure, so the rate at which that club face closes is quite high, very difficult to time. And it's also going to be very, very difficult to get the hand path through impact as consistent or as accurate as we'd like it. So we'll often find golfers can hit, as I say, right to their ball flights this way, they often get quite happy, hit balls the range, right to left, brilliant. Six months later, they come back and they say, do you know what, that's not the best thing for me. I can't control it. I'm hitting pushes, I'm hitting draws, I'm hitting hooks. I don't know which is going to happen. I can't control it on the golf course. And that's because they're getting the club laid down too late in the golf swing. We want to try and lay that club down a little bit earlier in the golf swing. If we are going to lay that club down earlier in the golf swing, we need to feel at the top that we have the club into a little bit more laid off position. Once we have it in a little bit more of a laid off position, it's much easier to lay the club down a little bit earlier. And from there, we can just focus on now moving the hands into the golf ball on a much better path and we can get a lot more control over the club face and a lot more control over the delivery pattern of that golf club. So for you golfers who feel that like you are across the line, I definitely would think it, was a, it would be a good idea to try and address that and try and work towards what you feel is a little bit more of a laid off position. How are you gonna feel that? Well, I want you to feel that in two different areas. I want you to think about your lead wrist and I want you to think about your right elbow and your right arm. If you have that club across the line, you're probably going to have a wrist position which is a little bit this way, a little bit cupped, and you're potentially going to have your right elbow too much out behind you. I want you to feel that your lead wrist is a bit flatter and you'll feel that your sort of 
rotating your arm more in front of you this way. Okay, so let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna go into a position at the top where I get a little bit across the line. So I'm gonna try and feel like I flatten my wrist and I push my elbow a little bit more out in front of me here. So you can see here that my elbow is less out the side of me. It's a little bit lower and it's a little bit more in front of me. You can see what that's doing to the shaft angle. That coupled with this flatter lead wrist is gonna help me achieve a position at the top which is going to be a little bit more neutral. It's much easier to deliver the club from there. Many golfers, however, may find that there's a little bit of a limited range of motion in this arm. And if you have got some limited range of motion, that may well be one of the things that's influencing that club getting across the line. If you cannot position your right arm correctly at the top, you haven't got that amount of rotation, you're gonna find that club is a little bit across the line. But certainly it's something you can work on. So, you're gonna to go to the driving range. You're gonna make a little back swing halfway back, and you're gonna feel now that you flatten your wrist and you work your elbow. What you feel is a lot more in front of you. You can see how that puts me in a more laid off position. If I've got the club a little bit more laid off there, I can lay that club down a little earlier. Lead wrist is nice and flat. I can start to work my hands down in front of me. My hands can then start to work up and in as I get to impact and the club can get delivered a lot more efficiently to the golf ball. So in summary, if you feel you have this cross line position at the top, you may well be able to hit some right to ball flights, but I don't think it will be the most consistent way for you to play out on the golf course. There are better, more functional ways to hit that right to ball flight. Fixing the position at the top is gonna to be the first stage in working towards a more controllable, a more predictable ball flight. Hopefully that made sense. Let me hit a couple. Just got a seven iron. So this is something I actually continually work on because if you've seen any of my other videos uh, or any of the course vlogs, you'll notice that I probably do get the club a little bit across at the top. So certainly something I'm working on, trying to sort of flatten that wrist and get this, this right arm position better. And generally speaking, when I can do it, the numbers I get through flight scape and trap are much, much better. I can control my path much, much better. And if I can control my path better, it's a lot easier for me to position the face accordingly. And I can hit a lot more sort of consistent shots with a lot more neutral ball flight. So certainly something I'm continually working on. So I'm gonna feel flatter wrist, right arm is positioned slightly differently. And again, if anything, that was a little fade, which is certainly something I'm working towards. Okay, so hopefully it made sense. Um, I certainly believe that if you understand the consequences of a certain position or a certain look in the golf swing, it helps you a little bit more understand what you need to do and why you need to do it. And I think that really helps the, uh, the sort of learning process. So have a look at your swing. Have a go at that drill. Feel that right arm. Feel that lead wrist. You'll hopefully hit some better shots, some more functional shots, and some more consistent right-to-left ball flights, if that's what you're working towards. Okay. Thank you very much for watching the video. I uh, hope you liked it. Post your comments down below. It'd be interesting to hear your thoughts. And please subscribe if you haven't done already. Um, there's videos going to weekly, so it just means you won't be sending the content. Okay, thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you again next time.